It looks like we're going to go down the stairs. We should throw these animals over the edge! Are you kidding me? The grenade indicator disappeared means the grenade was out of explosive range. I was out of its explosive range. What the fucking hell? <sighs> God damn it, give me a fucking break. Shit. Don't they ever stop to reload? Damn. I think I got the, I think I got the bazooka guy. I can't tell because each time I get hit, I lose the fucking reticle. And that time I got it. So I was blood spurt that time. God damn it. God damn it! Come on! Give me a fuck. Stop the bullets for just a moment so I can move somewhere! Okay, get in here. Alright. It's not going to work. Damn it! I was clearing the forces up so well. The only thing I can do is just... run in there and run over to get run into that building and stop the locals reinforcements from coming in from the left side. From where?! Where the fuck is the enemy fire coming from? Jesus Christ! Damn, I'm out of ammo on both guns. I got something. It's in progress now. Shoot through that w w wood over there to get those guys. I gotta like approach this really, really slowly. This is their respawn point right here. Be real careful here. I got like almost approach this like I'm approaching a stealth game. You know, this is a freaking World War game. Rocket launcher up there. 
zählt. Ja, halt rein, aber. I got him that time. What's still shooting me? Another respawn point over there? Alright, they're all dead over there. Okay. Damn it. I got some ammo and something now. Okay. I got the Panzer Shrek. Here's, another, yeah, here's the other spawn point. There's nothing here but an empty wall, so this is their, their spawn point. Keep them away from the flag okay, we're doing good now for finally. Oh, the game's actually lowered its difficulty or something, but finally got this far. At least we got the help there. Feed the Russian flag. Where is it? Oh, okay. You have the flag. <laughs> they have nowhere left to go. Move up. Clear a path for the flag. I can't shoot, so it's all up to you guys. Hey, we all know how good you guys are at, at, at protecting me. Alright, now I just run up here. And everything here is cutscene on out. You can make it, my friend. You always survive. There goes that flag. I can look around, but I don't think I can move. Can I move? Oh, I can move. Should be yours. As I bleed to death. X to plant the flag. Flag captured. No, sorry. As long as you live. The heart of this army can never be broken. Things will change, my friend. As heroes, we will return to Russia's embrace. And I pass out and die from either lead poisoning or blood or blood loss. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The victory won in the West must now be won in the East. The, um, the nuclear, or not the, nuclear the atomic bombs that uh, destroyed Nagasaki, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. A solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. It is my earnest hope 
and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past, a world founded upon faith and understanding of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. That much is true, by the way. Those two lines. I mean, the, that was obviously General MacArthur speaking, but the 60 million lives lost to World War II and the uh, it being the most deadliest war in his, human history, that's very true. Impressive. And that's, uh, that's it for World War. Um... <laughs> It's a it's a fun first person shooter, and I'm glad I I'm, I'm glad I revisited it uh, for the channel. I played it a lot a long not a lot, but I played it a long time ago. Played it a couple of times. Uh, a long time ago, um, but actually the first time I played it was uh, with a friend who uh, we didn't actually play the 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 campaign mode. We just did the Nazi zombie uh, horde mode. Uh, so that that was the first time I was ever actually, actually introduced to any kind of Call of Duty game, and my first encounter with it was actually uh, a horde mode, was the Nazi zombie horde mode. So that was my first experience with Call of Duty. <laughs> but eventually I got the game myself and decided to check out the campaign mode, and uh, I do enjoy uh, games that reenact the reenact wars, you know, like I like Battle Station Pacific, uh, Pacific, the specific game of Battle Stations Pacific, and Battle Stations Midway because they're uh, they recreate the naval war of between the United States and Japan. I mean, Pacific also adds a, a what if scenario to the Japanese side, but you know, in the uh, with the exception of that, everything else is accurate uh, to the events of World War Two in the Pacific. Um. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that if I read up on them, the events that uh, that we saw in this game uh, were accurate to the uh, events of World War II. I know Okinawa was. I know uh, 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 the making atoll uh, and um, Peleliu. What, what they call it? I, I think I thought it was pronounced Peleliu. I may be pronouncing it wrong, but anyway, those three areas I know for sure were real. <clears throat> I don't know anything about the the war on the uh, between the Russians and the and the Germans, so I can't say for sure if that was accurate. I mean, I'm sure it is. I'm pretty sure it is because you know why why would that be why would that be fiction? The other part be real, right? <clears throat> uh, but why would the why would the Russian campaign be fiction and the American campaign be nonfiction? You know, but you know, that's, so I'm pretty sure it's accurate to a point. I mean, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. A Dmitry Petrenko, a private Dmitry Petrenko, that posted the the flag on top of the that building, and that was the kind of victory for the Russians. I'm pretty sure that's probably inaccurate. They put they put some of it. Uh, they put it on you as the player to be the hero of the situation because that's how it works. I mean, why would you? Well, they wouldn't make the player be just some random grunt that dies halfway through the mo halfway through the game. I mean, it doesn't I mean, that that dies halfway through the campaign. It doesn't make sense. So I mean, they twisted it. For, they twisted some facts to make it an entertaining game for the game aspect, but they left as many of the of the accuracies as they could to locations, events, how uh, the Americans got this far in this area, how they did it. You know, when they used the flamethrowers to uh, in the in the trenches, when the Russians you know, used their tanks in this area, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and that, that I do enjoy those. I do enjoy those. A lot of people. Well, I don't say a lot of people. I do know some people that think reenacting wars and historic events in a video game insults the idea uh, 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 of the events of those of those wars, of those historic events. But I don't agree with that. I feel it's more of a... What's the word I'm looking for? More of like a... I don't, I don't, I don't know. The dedication is the right word. 
even though they, you pretty much are kind of dedicating, like, like you saw that most times they dedicate the game to the, the those who are involved in the real wars. But I, I guess sort of dedication, I, I don't really know if that's the exact word I'm looking for. Oh, really? Reznov was Gary Oldman. Okay, I didn't know that. I knew Roebuck was Kiefer Sutherland. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, I, uh, I don't know that, uh, uh, words, English, language. Come up with some. <laughs> uh, ded- dedication is, I don't know if dedication is the right word to describe it, but it, it's a, it helps, I feel it helps memorialize those people who actually participated in the real war. Even if there are some inaccuracies here and there for gameplay sake. To me, it's also, you know, it's the same thing as reenact having a movie uh, reenacting a war, you know, things like Pri- uh, Saving Private Ryan, or you know any any world any uh, war based uh, uh, movies. And there's you know there's tons of them. It's the same thing. It's 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 a it's a it memorializes those who were involved in the real war. As far as the game itself, um, it was fun. Uh, the campaign was fun enough. Um, the, it suffers from some issues like the constant flow of reinforcements. If you've got a position that the, that the you're, you're trying to approach from uh, as you're attacking, you've got a position that the enemies are defending, you kill, like, say you got a, well, like, kind of like that last area there, we were, were standing behind the corner of that arch, and just to my left there was that one barrier there, and there were two German soldiers there. Every time I would kill those two soldiers, within a couple of seconds, two more would appear and take their spot. You kill them, two more would appear, take their spot. Kill them, so on, and so on, and so on. And the only way to actually stop the reinforcements from approaching was to run up there and, and actually get in close to the location where they would respawn, and that and the game would be programmed to say, okay, no more respawning them here. But until you got to that point, you have to keep dealing with infinite un, uh, infinite forces constantly flowing in that never had to worry about. That at least I don't think they had to reload. If they did, it didn't seem to happen very often, and apparently had unlimited ammo. They had to, even if they did have to reload, they still kept firing. I mean, they, it, they, they never ran completely out of ammo, no matter how many times they reloaded. So it, that that got on my nerves, because there was times when you would like eliminate a, a position, a zone, and by the time you were ready to move up, they had brought in reinforcers to refill those spots. And that would be okay if they eventually stopped. Like, say if they, like that one position I kept talking about with the two German soldiers... Even, let's say they ha- they should have had no more than maybe five, maybe at most, maybe depending on difficulty, you can increase the number, ten respawns of those two soldiers coming in. You kill the two soldiers, they respawn and come in. No more than five, maybe ten times. And again, like I said, we cre- increase the difficulty, increase the amount of res- respawns of difficulty. But after that point, no more. That would allow me to move up because by the time I was able to eliminate those two soldiers and have a chance to move up, the soldiers that had respawned and started moving in and were immediately attacking me. I have to deal with limited ammunition. I don't get the infinite ammo that they do, and I have to reload. So if I'm completely out of ammo, when I happen to take down those last two guys, by the time I start trying to move up to maybe take their weapons and refill my ammo, those two guys are coming back out and I've got no way to defend myself. And I died so many times on that. Another thing that it really, really, really grinded my gears in this, about this game is the grenades. It seemed like the grenade explosions were bigger than they should have been and did a lot more damage than I feel they should have been, at least f- the ones that were, fought, that were thrown my direction. And there were a number of times that it said, you were killed by a grenade, watch for the grenade indicator. I could probably count at least half a dozen times that there was no grenade indicator and I suddenly died from a grenade. I mean, it's, it may have, if, if, it, if there was one there, it may have popped up for like maybe one frame and there was no way I was going to be able to see it. Or especially not have me able to time to react to it and pick it up and throw it or, or get away from it. Uh, and I think the occasionally the, the you if you threw a grenade, the enemies would occasionally throw it back and that just, that really, 
they, they had a this game has a real issue with, for lack of a better term, grenade spam. Not only were they throwing your grenades back to back at you, they were throwing their grenades a lot. And from what I've heard on harder difficulties, the the number the amount of grenade spam is shot way way up. So even on normal difficulty, which is what I had this on, that was that was really irritating. The number of grenades they threw. So I can't imagine how much worse it is on insane or whatever the highest difficulty is. And then there were times when I was trying to get to to a certain point. One other thing I don't like is, and, and this goes for any game. And this this game was is guilty of this, is repeated objectives or not repeated objectives, but them. Re, uh, reminding you of your of your objectives. Case in point, the biggest one that got on my nerves was when we were at the American side and we had to take out those three bunkers, and it kept they kept telling me flank them, and use the uh, use the uh, flamethrower and the satchel charges to take out those bunkers. Well, first of all, my first problem with that is every time I tried to flank the uh, direction I think they were asking me to go, there were more forces, the more Japanese forces on that other side that kept flowing in. So even as I was trying to flank the first bu first bunker, the forces from bunker number two or maybe even bunker number three were gunning me down from that direction uh, so I couldn't get over there safely to flank them. But the second thing, and this was the more irritating thing, and, I, and this got on my nerves throughout the game and bugs me in any game that constantly does that, is repeatedly tell me over and over again what to be doing. Miller, go, f go throw the satchel charges. Miller, go throw the satchel charges. Midgel, M M Miller, go throw the, uh, the, go flame out those bunkers. Miller, throw the satchel charges. Miller, go flame out the, what are you waiting for, Miller? Go throw, shut the fuck up. Stop. Tell me once, maybe twice, that's enough. Stop, because while you're constantly in my ear telling me to do that thing, that, that, object, that particular object, objective or task over and over and over again, I'm trying to get there. Stop bugging me about it. Oh my fucking God, that gets on my nerves. Developers, once or twice, maybe remind your characters of their, of the, uh, really? Characters and events depicted in this game are fictitious? What? That can't be right. This whole game is based on on World War Two. What if they had to say that for like certain events? In certain events, they in certain events like like I said the uh, uh, putting uh, with uh, Dimitri putting the uh, uh oh. I think I know I'm about to start because I remember this intro. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing this. This is starting the Nazi zombie uh, mode. I'm not doing this. But, uh, yeah, this is the Nazis. I'm not doing this. <laughs> uh, maybe they're talking about putting the Dimitri putting that flag out there. Maybe that was, a, uh, that was an unreal event. That, that, that was a fictitious event. So they had to say that I am not playing this mode. Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe, so maybe that's why they had to say that. But I'm pretty sure many other events were accurate. I mean, making Atoll, uh, uh, Peleliu, those were all real locations and and, event, and real events happen there. Okay, whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah, getting back to what I was saying. Ha having, your, having someone remind you of what your, what your objective is, what your task is, is fine once or twice. But don't keep hounding your players on what they're trying to do. Because, especially for me, that really, really, really pisses me off. I really hate that, especially when I'm struggling to get to that point. I'm trying to work my way around, and again, like I said, I constantly have Roebuck or somebody else in my ear telling me what I'm supposed to be doing, even though I'm I'm working on that. You know, it's one of those things where I would have to say, I'm working on it, shut the fuck up. You know, that kind of thing. Um, other than that, I didn't really think I had, I don't really think it, I have much else to complain about. The um, the gameplay was, was, was overall fun. The... Uh, the guns were, I mean, they 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 all felt unique. Even if the, there wasn't really, even though you had a, a two of very similar guns, like say two auto uh, two auto rifle uh, two auto rifles two uh, full auto uh, rifles two auto, auto full auto guns, they still both felt different. Thing, for example, like the uh, the uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I think it's called the PSH forty four PSH forty. Um, 
It was a gun that uh, Rez uh, Reznov had a lot. That was very accurate, fired a lot of bullets very fast. I like that gun. And then you had other full auto rifles that fired a little bit slower, a little bit more inaccurately, and kind of and did kind of sway around your your targeting. Excuse me, target your targeting a little bit. And then you had the semi-auto weapons, things like the uh, the M1A1 carbine, I think, the uh, I think the Type 100 that were semi-automatic that you, you it fired as fast as you could pull the trigger. And I, I do like those guns too. Uh, while I do like auto uh, full auto weapons. I would say I actually like guns that are full that are semi-auto that fire as fast as you pull the trigger, just a little bit more than full auto uh, full auto weapons. And then of course you had like the DMR type weapons where you'd where you fire not quite sniper power or sniper rifles where one shot guaranteed no matter what you hit you're going to kill your target. You had what what are like smaller versions of sniper rifles, things like the um, can't, I, I can't remember the name of the weapons very well in this game, um, but there was one that was there, there was actually two or three of them actually that. Uh, that fired sort of like a sniper rifle, but didn't deliver the damage that a sniper rifle would. You fired and you hit a target, unless you hit a critical spot, the, 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 your target likely will survive one bullet, but maybe not two. Whereas a sniper rifle will guarantee kill, will guarantee be a one-hit kill, no matter where you hit them. Uh, so I did like that variety of weapons. Um, one, another kind of downside I wanted to say to the weapons uh, that I felt was that the explosive weapon, specifically the Panzer Shrek? Did we ever use uh, rockets, uh, a, a rocket launcher or, or bazooka kind of thing with uh, the Americans? I can't remember if we did. Uh, maybe we did. I just don't recall right now. But anyway, the Panzer Shrek and the bazooka type weapons, when you use, it, it's nice you were able to use them on heavily armed targets like the, like tanks and stuff, and you blew them up. That was awesome. That was really cool. But when you use them on infantry. They seem like their explosive radius just did very little except just, you know, be a nor of a nuisance to to the target to the to the, to the infantry that you hit, and that the, that seems very inaccurate to me because I mean, you you shoot a, a bazooka or a rocket launcher into a into a, like a bunker or one of those pillboxes with uh, with in, infantry troops in them in real life they're all going to be splattered pieces they're all going to be dead. So I didn't like how that was inaccurate. And I don't really see the reason why they would make that inaccurate. I can't see that it, that it would be a... The only thing I could possibly think of is the developers would say, well, it was a balanced thing. If you carried a Panzer Shrek or a bazooka of some kind throughout the entire level, you'd be able to just eliminate... You'd be able to er eradicate large groups of enemies in just moments. <sighs> No, uh, yes, you could, but with oh, since you had so many allies around you all the time, there would be the danger of shooting one of your allies and the explosion killing you. Like, just like if you threw a grenade at your feet or something, or like when I used those mor those um, uh, mortars, when I would prime the mortar and didn't throw it far enough and I'd kill myself. Which, by the way, I really love those uh, priming those grenades and throwing those, the priming those uh, uh, mortar mortars and throwing them. That was really, really cool. Except for a few times that I blew myself up. That was bad. <laughs> so I don't really... So that was really my only complaint about the weapons. Just the, 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 the bazooka just didn't seem realistic for what they would be doing. But overall, I think it was a really good game. I mean, it was, um, it was my first Call of Duty, like I said. Uh, it is the last one, I believe, that they made uh, in the World War II era of uh, Call of Duty games, uh, with the exception of World War II, Call of Duty World War II, which came out really, really recently, at least at this recording. Everything between World War II and this game was games like Modern Warfare, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare. And uh, as far as those games go, I'm going to be doing them, I'll be doing those games also, but again, just doing the campaign. Uh, I'm, while... I'm not really doing them chronologically. I kind of I I am doing them chronologically, but not in the same way I would be doing like a chronological uh, series of games, like say Halo or Borderlands or Kingdom Hearts. Um, 
the next game I will be probably playing in the key, in the uh, in the Call of Duty series is going to be Modern Warfare One, uh, which is actually technically called Call of Duty Four: Modern Warfare. But they made sequels to Modern Warfare called Two and Three. Obviously, so they they dropped the Call of Duty Four moniker after that. But um, I'll probably be doing I'll be doing Modern Warfare One, Two, and Three. Um, I don't know that I, I don't think I have Black Ops, so I may not be doing those. But I think I have Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare, so I'll be doing those two. If I get around to getting the Black Ops uh, games, I'll probably do those as well, as long as they have a, a campaign. I believe there is one Black Ops game that does not have a campaign, and it's, it's strictly like a Battle Royale or multiplayer-only mode, like Fortnite, and I have no interest in playing those games. I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in PvP. I'm certainly not interested in uh, Battle Royale mode, so I'm not going to be... If it doesn't have a, uh, a campaign mode, I'm not going to be doing it. Um... But, I, but Call of Duty will be a series that I will be doing eventually. And uh, it's probably going to be a while before I get around to the next game, which is going to be at, uh, Modern Warfare 1, or Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, however you want to title it. Uh, will be the will be the remastered version, though, so I'll be doing it on the uh, either the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, whichever one I have a copy of. I can't remember for sure. Anyway, <clears throat> as for this game, that'll do it. Um, as always, I'd like to send a special appreciation to the men and women of the United States military, both at home and overseas, and in the case of this game, which is very appropriate, to those who uh, have uh, protected this country for, for, for the centuries that have gone by, the, the decades and centuries that have gone by, uh, as well as police officers and firefighters around the country. Without all of you guys doing what you do and have done in the past, I would not be free to do this, so thank you very, very much. You are all and have are and have been the true heroes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the links at the end of this video for more of my stuff, including the entire playlist of, of Call of Duty World at War. And thanks so much for watching. This has been Call of Duty World at War. I'm Scorer, the Crimson Renegade. I'll see you later.